This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. So let's take this scenario where we have two web servers. All right, These web servers have a website on them. They need to be configured exactly the same because they're part of a network load balance. Well, with just two web servers, we might just be able to manually configure them and set them up and make sure they're the same. But now let's say we have 10 web servers. Well, it gets a little bit more difficult. And that's a lot of time spent configuring. And let's say, all right, we re release something new, you know, a new web application that has a new configuration. Well, we got to do that 10 different times if we're doing it manually. And hopefully we do it the same on all 10 servers. Well, now let's take an example where we have 100 web servers. Well, then that just gets unmanageable to do it manually. And then there's also the possibility that some of the web servers might become a little bit different than other web servers. Well, we don't have a great way to check that. Well, in comes desired state configuration, and it's basically a script that allows us to, first of all, configure a web server, or any server for that matter, a certain way, and then it'll also run periodic checks to make sure that the web server is still configured the way it should be. And I keep saying web server, but it could be any server. So just some of the things we can do with desired state configuration is it install or remove roles and features, manage registry settings, manage files and directories, start, stop, and manage uh, services and processes, manage local groups and user accounts, install and manage packages such as MSIs and EXEs, uh, manage environment variables, run other Windows PowerShell scripts for maybe further configuration, fix a configuration that might have changed just a bit, and a lot of other things we could do. It's, it's very flexible. So if we're trying to do this with PowerShell, let's say, let's take a very simple example and then we'll get to a little bit more useful example here in a bit. Let's say we need to make sure that the Telnet client is installed on our servers. Well, with PowerShell, I could do something like this. Basically, I could get Windows Feature, store that uh, output in a Telnet client, installed variable, and then if the installed property equals false, then go ahead and install the Telnet client. Now, with desired state configuration, this is how it would look. It's Windows Feature, and we just give it a name here. We want to ensure that it's present, and the name of the feature is Telnet Client, and that's it. So it's something called declarative, where we're kind of telling it what we want. We're not telling it exactly how to do it. So desired state configuration, and particularly the local configuration manager on each of our machines, which handles the configuration of desired state configuration, it handles the how part, how it's going to actually accomplish that task. We're just telling it what we want here. In desired state configuration scripts can get pretty long, but in general they're easy than actually writing it out in PowerShell and handling errors and things like that. And also desired state configuration works across reboots. So if part of our configuration process requires a reboot, it can do that and then continue on with the desired state configuration. Also with PowerShell, it's difficult to create a script that actually checks a configuration and then if it's not right, fixes it. Desired state configuration, that's basically what it's designed to do. And also when we're deploying a script or a script is, is checking against the nodes, it's done in parallel. So let's say we have a hundred web servers and all those web servers were making some sort of configuration change we're changing our desired state configuration files for those those web servers well it doesn't change one server then go to the next server then go to the next server it can do them all at the same time so that way if the whole configuration let's say takes 10 minutes you know if we have 100 web servers it doesn't take 10 times 100 you know minutes a thousand minutes in order to get the job done it just takes 10 minutes because they're all running at the same time 